You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hi there, my name is Kathleen McGivern, and you're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. And uh, today I'm going to dive in on the topic of social emotional learning, also known as SEL. Before we begin, let's understand what social emotional learning, or SEL, is and what it can look like in the art classroom or through art. So what is social emotional learning? Well, SEL is a process that both kids and adults can understand and use to manage their emotions, set goals, feel and show empathy towards others, and learn social awareness and socializing skills to allow them to build relationships. So the five core competencies of SEL are self-awareness, which is recognizing one's emotions and understanding how it influences behavior, self-management, which is the ability to regulate one's emotions and behaviors in different situations, Social awareness, which is the ability to take perspectives and empathize with people from culturally diverse backgrounds. Relationship skills, which is the ability to develop and maintain healthy relationships with people and groups of diverse backgrounds. And finally, responsible decision making, the ability to make respectful choices based on personal behavior and social interactions and the care for the well-being of self and others. So what does it look like in schools? Well, it can be learning about our emotions, what triggers them, and how we react. For example, if we build that self-awareness piece, we can recognize we're angry or are angry and find strategies to use to calm down before we continue to escalate into a red beast. So for instance, classrooms, including art classes, can have sensory bins, which I just find interesting tactile things to put in from the dollar store. Often, like, honestly, those goodie bag little tactile things that kids like, you know, like in goodie bags from parties, they usually come in like packs of 10. Sometimes there's like mazes or like little squishy balls with those like spiky things on them, or even just like little toy animals, right? Because they're rubber, they have different textures, they're interesting to look at. Like hacky sacks, anything, anything. Um, I just get those and that's what I put in. Um, It is just there to change the visual and feeling or tactile based sensory of the individual to help them calm down. Um, I tried a slinky once and I'm gonna be honest, It was really good for about 10 seconds and then you know what happens with slinkies they get all tangled and then it turns into a never-ending cycle of kids who are triggered wanting the slinky but also it's frustrating them (laughs) because it's tangled so whatever you do don't get a slinky (laughs) that was that's my One thing that I found that was not a good, not a good fit. And I thought, oh yeah, slinky. But anyways, Um, so you can have the kit, right? So you can have a full calm down kit with visuals that guide individuals through self-awareness checklists or provide visual strategies for different ones that can manage their emotions and get them back into the green zone, which is a zones of regulation reference. Uh, which is a state where you're calm, you're focused, uh, you're yourself, uh, or to simply put it, you're ready to learn. So, 
As well, teaching social emotional learning allows for opportunities of social awareness, allowing students the opportunity to develop the ability to take perspectives and empathize with people from culturally diverse backgrounds. This also falls into relationship skills because we're learning um, about a, we're sorry we're teaching kids to develop and maintain healthy relationships with people and groups of culturally diverse backgrounds teaching SEL in schools or in our own classrooms allows for the opportunity for students to allow for the care or well-being of self and others and all this, this is important. So we can teach social emotional learning in art. It can be taught through art. So teaching it through art is natural because art is already a reflection of our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own feelings and emotions. It is essential that we teach it in art because it is allowing students the opportunity to express themselves and also explore SEL through mediums, materials, and drawings. Journaling is a great way to explore SEL, but what if the barrier for the child is writing? Many of us can make a mark in some way with a medium or even just using colors or just line can say a lot about how we feel, right? When we teach the element of art line, we're teaching that lines can show, can appear in different right ways, right? We have wavy lines, zigzag lines, we have variety in lines, right? Thick or thin, but also we can talk, we teach expressive lines, right? Lines that show movement or emotions or feelings. So, even if they can't depict the an image, they can even just do lines or move the paintbrush around with some paint on it to show how to express themselves, right? So, and um, if an individual can't draw because of a disability, we can always try our best um, to find something that will allow them to express themselves. So perhaps um, it might be through the paint or you could have shaving foam out and then they can use their fingers to move the shaving foam around or make lines in it. Um, that's something that they can feel if they're visually impaired. Or you can use clay or Play-Doh. The point of this is self-reflection and awareness, not necessarily the end result every time. It can be or lead towards that, but we also have to allow for pure mindfulness and self-awareness as well that is undisturbed by our ideas, right, and input. So when I say our, I mean the teacher's ideas and wants. As well, we have to be careful that we don't crush the kids' willingness to open up and be vulnerable. We have to be careful not to crush the kids or the students' willingness to allow this new, uncomfortable feeling to come out. Okay, so think about it if you've ever had opened up. Now just picture that feeling, right? If you've ever opened up about something or have talked about something or have confronted people about whatever, whatever right? Um, and then when I say confront, I mean like explain your feelings to somebody. <laughs> Um, I, you can feel that, imag just imagine that emotion, right? So that is what I'm talking about. So you can understand what the students are feeling as well. They too are feeling that. So we don't want to crush their willingness to explore and experiment. And we don't want to prevent those feelings. Sometimes I see kids who don't draw or don't want to make art not because they don't want to, but because an adult crushed them in the past with criticism or assessment that wasn't provided in a safe, caring, positive way and wasn't constructive. For me, in my own art life, I have faced a lot of criticism. 
So I create creepy and cute lowbrow artworks that I display in highbrow galleries. So naturally I face a lot of criticism, but it took me 10 years to realize that those comments are their wants, right? It's not my wants for my art. It's their wants for my art. Um, so now in an artist talk, I generally mention that my art is for me. I don't create art for a living, which not many can. Um, the gallery takes half of any sales. So if you only do a few shows a year at max, whatever you sell, usually a few pieces, right? Unless, I mean, you get all red dots. Um, galleries take in half. The expenses for life are unreal, but often money isn't talked about. Um, in talks and it is felt as though your art is your income which is completely not true and money does exist anyway the point of that rant was that I think it's pretty important that we let kids make art that is self-reflection and exploration the way they want to make it the value or target of the learning for this should be their ability to speak should be their ability to be self-aware, to reflect, to be vulnerable, and dig deep and explore these issues. I know that when I do these activities or meditate, I feel uncomfortable and vulnerable. It is a barrier and it causes friction from doing the task because it's hard to confront your own thoughts and your own feelings, right? It's hard to come to terms with that. So what I'm saying is if a kid is willing to participate, which is huge because there is a lot of vulnerability going on, um, then don't spook them. Okay. Don't spook them with your constructive criticism, not your positive criticism, right? There's a difference about the way they're creating or making in my opinion, it's not necessary really for this activity. This could be a trigger point. And back to accessibility. This activity could be really good for the kids who generally really need to do this. The ones who struggle to be self-aware or have big emotions at times. Often their relationship with education or learning is a challenge or writing or reading might be difficult. So assessing this is hard for them, but not if it is done through art because you can just draw. It is accessible for those kids that need this. Or maybe something happens, like unexpected things happen. I don't have to say it. You can think about all the different kinds of things that have happened in our world or that have happened during your teaching career in the world or your country that are hard to explain or deal with after. Social emotional learning and in quotation marks dealing with it can be done with art as well. So in addition to other things that need to be done, obviously this is not a replacement for counseling. Okay. We are not the counselors of, unless of course you are, then that's, 100% different. But what I'm saying is I'm not a counselor. So if I'm teaching this, I'm not counseling kids. I'm just, all I'm doing is providing them a safe and caring space for them to express themselves and reflect. That is it. So, um, like if something goes on or happens, it's just that if it doesn't feel right creating a dinosaur drawing or like a starry night inspired art piece, then don't do it. Save it for later and do an SEL art activity instead. All right, so now we understand the why. Let's dive into some ideas for what you can do with your kids. Some art ideas. So the first is mindful starts in art. I love mindful art starts in the art classroom because it creates a wonderful opportunity for students to transition from whatever they were doing to art. Mindful art starts are just moments where you dim the lights, 
You can get some cheap lamps for your classroom or just use natural light if you have windows. And you turn on some nice, soft music. YouTube has huge deep relaxation or meditation or focus music playlists that are like three hours long that you can turn on and play and even keep playing softly after all of this is over, like while they work. Now, it's our class, so in addition to this, they are quietly drawing, mindfully. Let them focus on the moment, not worry about the past because it's already happened, not worry about the future because it hasn't happened yet. Just focus on your thoughts and feel and how you feel right now with deep cleansing breaths in and slowly out. Let them free sketch or work on a sketchbook assignment while they draw. You're not giving instruction or giving input. You're just letting them live in the moment mindfully. You can remind them not to talk during this time. It is silent sketching. And while this goes on, you can transition from one group of kids to the next so you don't feel flustered from the quick group change. You can take a deep breath in and slowly out. Sit down for one minute. Do attendance. Get the lesson ready. Super quietly, of course. Whatever. Now, mindful art starts will vary for age and how often you see your kids or for how long the classes. When I taught high school art, I did this every day for five to, or 10 minutes because the classes were long. They were also semesters. I saw them every day. Um, so it was different from especially what I do now. <laughs> so the seniors were exhausted from having left math or science and really enjoyed working on their sketchbook assignments in a peaceful way. It also gave them the opportunity to make good drawings in their books that weren't rushed. For elementary, this is more challenging. If your instructional time is only 31, sorry, 30 minutes and their kindergarten or grade one, then 10 minutes of mindful art starts each time would be chaotic. <laughs> You'd never have time to teach a lesson and 10 minutes is eternity to those guys. So maybe it's one minute of dim lights and music and deep breathing with no drawing for that time. Or maybe it's one minute, but every Friday all your classes on that day start with three to five minutes of silent sketching with music or coloring or drawing, whatever. Or maybe you do 10 minutes with each class once a month to allow them to do some mindful drawing. Or you can use it on days simply when they need it. You'll know when you see them. So guided meditation in art class Another thing you can do is guided meditation. You can play a guided meditation for kids track on YouTube or find one online and read it. So while this guided meditation happens, you can let kids draw an image. So free, tra free draw with choice mediums. That is a reflection of their feelings, their thoughts, their ideas in that moment. Or you can do a theme. Sometimes we will do a meditation with the focus being on gratitude and while they're listening, they're drawing things they're grateful for and how beautiful is that? You can also create art that explores culture and identity. You can create art that explores their own culture and identity. So when I do SEL lessons, I try to leave it completely student choice. What they draw is obviously a reflection and I do give some guidelines as to what we're focusing on or creating or how we set up our paper. Um, but for them, the unique individual who is practicing the self and social awareness, I do not tell them what to draw. But if they need help, or need someone to like bounce ideas off of, 
I'll sit and we will chat it out to help get ideas generating. Or they can do table group brainstorms or think, pair, share about culture and identity before they do um, their brainstorm. So before they draw so that they have ideas going into it. And usually all that follows a lesson that I've created on culture and identity. So usually I'll preload them, talk about culture and identity, then they'll think and reflect and talk, and then we'll go deeper into the sketching of our designs and creating. So it's definitely scaffolded. Um, and I do not tell them what mediums to use. I will tell them their options of what they can use, but I will not tell them which ones they will pick. Okay, so sometimes I might say you can use watercolor, wax crayons, pencil crayons, and pencil. Those are your choices. What you choose is up to you. Or you must choose two different mediums to use. That way it's encouraging them to pick, but they still have the ultimate choice. So I find um, that SEL artworks are the perfect opportunity to let students have choice. And I let it be student-led. Everything else is so controlled, so I let them explore this in their own way. As usual, I play music while they work. So I always put on some soft music. I might even keep the lights dimmed. Um, not super dim, down, right? Not dark, but just softly dimmed. If you would like a fully prepped art lesson on culture and identity, I have one already ready to go in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic, and you can find it by searching Ms. Artastic on teacherspayteachers.com. And then um, you can find them on the left side in my menu. You can click the social emotional learning tab and you will find it there. It is called a culture and identity mandala or you can find it in the SEL theme section with your Artastic Collective membership. As well, it is included as a clickable image in the show notes for this episode on my blog, MsArtastic.com. Click podcast. There is a link to the show notes in the description of the post. Okay, next idea is that you can create art that explores emotions with elementary students. So you can have kids create art that explores what their emotions look like. So for example, what does their happy look like? You can explore through choice drawing. What does it look like when they're sad, tired, excited, angry, furious, or scared? You can write down, write emotions down on paper and have students pull them out of a container. You can do four and create a collage with doodles, or you can pick one and turn it into a full art piece. You can use this for sketchbook assignments. You can do one emotion a week or month. Play with this fun exploration of self-awareness. Through art, they can learn about what it looks like when they're feeling a certain way. Then they can be taught to use different strategies that would, that could, pardon me, help them get back to the ready to learn stage or the green zone, or use a strategy that will help them calm down a bit. If you'd like a fully prepped and ready to go art lesson that explores creating emotion monsters, perfect for your primary or elementary students, then find it in my Teachers Pay Teachers store under the social emotional learning tab or find it in the SEL section with your Artastic Collective membership as well as again a clickable image in the show notes on the blog, MsArtastic.com. Okay, so next idea is that you could reflect on the things that you can hold on to and let go of. So finally, students can create drawings as a full art piece or full art pieces or ex as explorations for a sketchbook assignment that explores thing that, things that they can hold on to and things that they can let go of. So hold on to it be like a memory of a camping trip, my friends, my family, grateful journey, journaling, meditation, creating art, video games, for example. I'm just letting you know the difference. And then let go, for example, could be too much social media time or sleeping in too often, eating too much junk food, worrying about things I can't control, 
working too much, stressful situations, toxic friends, whatever. Again, this is going to look very different for each individual and certainly different among different ages of kids. Okay, so what somebody in grade 4 would do or write would be very different from what somebody in grade 12 is doing. But they can both do this same art project. It, it will just look different and be more complex the older they get. So, um, this is a wonderful self-awareness activity that is a great strategy for kids to let go of things that are causing them worry and stress letting them have the opportunity to get it out in a healthy way. And then they can also have a, rem uh, have a reminder to focus on what they want to hold on to, what is important to them. And again, I have this as a fully prepped art lesson in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store or in the SEL section of your Artastic Collective membership. It's called Hold On To and Let Go Of fully prepped, ready to go. So just find that link in the show notes of the blog or again, visit my Teachers Pay Teacher store in the social emotional learning section. Well, that is all for this episode. I hope that you can choose to try a strategy in your classroom. Try teaching an SEL lesson at least one this month. It could be a five-minute mindful art star, or it could be a drawing of an emotion or a full art project on culture and identity. See how it goes and feels for both you and your students. I am sure you will be surprised at the magic that will happen. Remember, if this is the first time you... Remember, sorry. If the first time you do this um, doesn't go as planned, no worries. We including our students, might feel uncomfortable and vulnerable doing this sort of inward looking and reflection. They might not be used to it or have never done it. It takes bravery to look at ourselves sometimes. So be flexible. Let things go. They'll come around eventually. The second time you might do it, you'll notice maybe more success of kids accessing this and wanting to engage and it'll all be worth it. So this is your action item that I leave with you. Teach one social emotional learning lesson um, based on art. So again, you can find the links to my TPT store if you just want to grab one and go. Um, so, or you can visit my blog, MsArtastic.com to find the show notes there. Or if you ha are an Artastic Collective membership, it is in your SEL section. I love you lots, Artastic Nation. This is Kathleen McGivern signing out.